Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we'll give it a couple of more minutes. Uh, let some of the other attendees join and we'll make a start. Um, we're opening a poll. So if you um, can you take a couple of minutes to um, help us fill this out, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. I think we have everyone here. Thank you all for uh, joining. This is um, the third webinar, the first part of the second series, the series around developing a, a digital capability. Um, so I have um, an esteemed panel of speakers with me today. Um, I'm Terry John, I'm not the esteemed one, but I'm uh, the Solutions Director for Workspace at XMA. And with me, I have uh, Chris from Scalable. Hi, Chris. Hello, good morning, Terry. Good morning, everyone. That's Chris and Simon as well from Scalable. Morning, Terry, and you're, you're esteemed to me. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Just a minute. And last but not least, Lisa from Global Knowledge. Hi Terry and morning all. Thank you guys. So just to give you an overview of the agenda, I won't read everything out, um, but that gives you a high level overview of what the agenda is. Uh, we're going to kick off with um, an overview on solutions, uh, then we're going to move over to how we're helping our customers with the support of scalable and global knowledge. Uh, we'll have some time for Q&As, but if you have any questions that you want to ask before then feel free to uh, drop them into the chat box on your screen and we'll answer them uh, where we can um, if you don't get a chance to answer them um, or you don't have the chance to ask the question today um, feel free to um, send those questions to your account managers um, or if you don't have an account manager we'll have some contact details at the end of this presentation so feel free to uh, send over any questions that you have over there. There'll be some polls as well. You've probably already seen one, the first one. Um, there'll be a couple more throughout this presentation, um, which will um, show up on the screen as we go through. Um, so to give you an overview um, of XMA's workspace solutions, I've 
spoken about this on the other webinars as well. So for those of you that have joined, I see there's a number of customers that have uh, joined all the webinars. So thank you for your uh, commitment there. Um, it's appreciated. And to those of you that are new to these webinars, thank you for joining. But just to give you a high level overview of what our solutions are, XMA, our, our job really is to help customers simplify um, the complexity that's traditionally associated with end user computing. Uh, we just want to make it as simple as possible. A lot of vendors across the platforms are doing that and it's our job to help customers understand um, how the best degree technologies work and help simplify uh, the user experience um, as well as IT efficiency. Uh, we're probably the only reseller in the UK that works across three major OS platforms at Apple, Google and Microsoft and with that we have a really strong network of complementary partners and I think obviously on this call as, as we go on on this webinar um, some of that will be demonstrated with scalable and global knowledge um, and kind of how we do that we break it out into four key areas so the digital workspace we focus on the deployment and management um, and then we kind of move from that to the security and control so the user access management uh, endpoint management for the data security and risk management and that kind of then leads us to productivity and collaboration. So whether that's SaaS apps, mobile apps, uh, internal web apps, um, and automating processes and bringing process to, processes together with robotic process automation. And then kind of the power that we gain from that is the insights uh, to understand that how things are working, um, where improvements could be made, um, which you'll see again as we go through this presentation. So quick kind of a summary that's kind of what we do in workspace the other element is the physical workspace so we also work with customers um, on how we can help them maximize the physical um, estate um, meeting rooms um, building a more agile working environment obviously that's going to change so what we have done because of where we are today is customers build this kind of roadmap really so we, the first couple of webinars that we did over the last couple of weeks were around preparing for business continuity. So there we talked about shifting from um, a VPN to a software defined perimeter. Uh, we also talked about um, remote PC access and virtualization of apps and desktops. So feel free to um, take a look at those. They're available on demand on our website. The webinar today is this one, part one of developing a digital capability. So how we help customers fast track um, their cloud first agenda um, with digital transformation and user adoption. Um, the following week we're joined um, by Google, so part two here, we're joined by Google, Microsoft and Lamaps. Um, so that'll be an interesting one next week. And then the final two is around security because uh, our kind of thinking is customers, because of where we are, where we are the situation that we're in, we're all being propelled into um, deploying applications that might have been deployed across pockets of an organization, across the whole of the organization. Um, so it's kind of understanding where we're at, doing it the best way we can, getting that meaningful data and those insights um, to make it the best experience possible really for the users and having those users like fully on board. Um, but with, with that comes um, the security element. So the last two webinars, um, we'll be talking about how we can um, balance security uh, and innovation so we're not hindering productivity so at this stage um part, part of, when, when we're working with customers on developing a capability or their transformation um, approach one of the things that xma does is works with um, it as well as business unit leaders to understand uh, their objections the goals and the con constraints and kind of with that, we help um, outline a transformation plan, which is measurable and aligns with both the technology and business needs. So we kind of, on this webinar, we've broken it out into two phases. So the first part is with scalable and the second part is with global knowledge. So at this stage, I will share, well, I'll transfer presenter to Chris. So Chris, bear me two seconds. Mm -hmm. And you should have control here. Okay. I think I'm going to just put this in presentation mode. So, can you see my screen, Terry? 
Yeah, yeah. Come see it, Chris. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Well, um, it's going to be a very quick run through, but um, I, I'm thankful for the opportunity of, of getting scalable in front of uh, some of your customers and potential customers. So, um, Scalable is essentially a, a platform on, on which uh, we have a couple of applications that sit today. Our core capability, which is described in the circle there, is around discovery, inventory, and uh, capturing usage data. Uh, we've been doing that for 10 years. We have hundreds of customers, and, um, and, 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 and it's a, a, an industrial strength um, application that forms part of many people's IT asset management and software asset management landscape, um, we, and, and that that is a product called Asset Vision. We'll get we'll get into a little bit of detail about the implications of that in a minute. Um, about to be launched, and, and about means probably four weeks from now, is a brand new product called Acumen, which is essentially measuring the the success of transformation digital transformation projects. And again, I'm, I'm going to talk in a little bit of detail about that in um, in a short while. So. Let's get on to Asset Vision. So um, Asset Vision is, is a product that takes discovery and inventory to essentially a, a new level. It goes far beyond um, the, the kind of basic discovery, inventory and normalization capabilities in that we provide highly granular usage um, insights. Um, so we, we don't only just discover and catalog and normalize the software that's installed. We take it a stage further and uh, identify to what extent that software is being used um, and, um, and there's three reasons why you might want to do that so we'll get on to that in just a minute so you know we can identify who used a software title from what device from what location how long for how many keystrokes were made you know how long that application was in focus uh, as opposed to in background and, and uh, you know, providing very highly usage uh, usage data why would anyone be interested in that? Well, there's, there's three use cases that we see, and the, and the one in the middle there, which I'll get onto in a minute, is probably the most uh, is probably the the, the 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 use case that's the most common for Asset Vision right now. But you, you might want to gather this kind of usage data for a cloud migration project. So supposing that you're moving from uh, you know locally installed Microsoft Office to uh, G Suite, for example, then knowing um, who's using what, for how long, um, to what extent they're using it, will give you a much more accurate uh, picture of, of the subscription and, and the capacity that needs to be provisioned, whether you're moving to, to 365 and, and, or whether you're moving to G Suite or, 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 or anywhere else for that matter. So cloud migration is, is, a, uh, is, a, is, a, is a compelling use case for asset vision. Cost optimization is also highly compelling in that what we find it, it, almost 100% of the time is that when you gather that level of granular usage, um, you'll find there is quite a lot of software that never gets used. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a figure that's kind of kicked around the industry, but it's, but it's, it's kind of estimated that on every corporate workstation in the world, there's about $400 of unused software. Now, if we can identify that, uh, we can then possibly repurpose some software to people that actually do need it. Uh, we can remove it and renegotiate the, 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 the um, subscription and maintenance fees that we pay to our software vendors and they're typically going to be people like uh, Microsoft and Adobe and VMware and, and, and others um, and um, it's, we typically see on an annual subscription a 400% saving from the use of asset vision uh, for cost optimization. Um, so, uh, and again, that's a, 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 a use case that is used by hundreds of our customers today. And, and thirdly, getting that level of um, granular usage um, is, is an important part of the license management landscape in that not only knowing what's installed but what's being used will allow you to make sure that you are compliant with the software licenses that have been, that have been put in place with, with, uh, between you and your software vendors. So in terms of asset vision, again, a recap, highly granular usage uh, of both locally installed applications, software as a service um, uh, uh, applications, um, and, and again, three very compelling use cases. Um, here is the, the one that I talked about uh, most extensively, which is the cost optimization um, uh, use case, where we gather 
Um, we, we don't know how much you spend on software, but but you know that, and, and putting in the, the, the value of your software will allow us to um, calculate the savings that you can make. And in this case, there's uh, there's a you know a 1.7 million dollar software being monitored by Asset Vision, and the potential savings from removing unused software in this in this particular case is. $794,000 of unused software that can be removed and uh, and we give you the ammunition to uh, get a better deal with your software vendors. So that's um, that's Asset Vision. Acumen, which again is in beta right now, it's going to be launched in four weeks time with, a, with some live customers, um, is essentially gathering or, or collecting the data that measures the gap between business goals and digital objectives. And I'll, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about what we mean by that in a minute. Um, so, um, and, and you know, never has this been more important than today. And you know, when when we uh, put this uh, webinar together with XMA uh, and, um, and, and uh, were invited to do this, I don't think any of us could have thought that, in addition to uh, bringing products to market quicker, improving the digital experience, improving uh, employee productivity through through collaboration. I don't think any of us thought we were going to do all of that and mostly do it by working remotely. So, you know, this has kind of added an additional um, and, and very compelling um, reason why why um, the, the measuring the gap between uh, or measuring the success of digital transformation initiatives is, is absolutely critical. And I'll talk about a particular example in a minute uh, around collaboration. Um, these numbers are not scalable numbers. They come from people like Gartner and Forrester and PwC and, and um, you know, well-respected industry bodies. Um, and um, but it, I don't think anyone would argue that um, an organisation which is more digitally agile um, and, and PwC have, have recently introduced a phrase called digital fitness. Um, so, you know, we are not the only ones talking about this, but organizations that realize the full value of digital transformation and uh, set themselves up to outperform their comp competition, to retain key staff through pro providing a, a, a better digital experience um, and, um, uh, and, and you know, more likely to, 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 to make more money. Um, so here, here is an example, it's just one example, which is a, 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 an operational outcome might be to improve collaboration. And we might improve collaboration through digital strategies such as improving the digital experience for employees and, and giving people the opportunity to, to work anywhere. And so they could be stated digital strategies. Underpinning that digital strategy could be, for example, the use of um, uh, 365 and Teams. Um, which should enable you to save storage costs because you're not um, storing documents locally, you're storing them in OneDrive, uh, which also improves security. It should enable you to reduce travel costs because we're having more uh, digital meetings as opposed to face-to-face -face meetings. Um, we should be able to retain staff through providing a, a better digital experience uh, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, what, what we find is if we measure um, the, the the adoption of something like 365 and Teams, and, and we look outside of that at the continued use of other products such as, uh, you know, GoToMeeting and WebEx and and uh, and, and uh, Jive and and uh, you know Skype and all these other products. What we often find is that the the adoption of um, of, of uh, a digital strategy such as 365 and Teams is impeded by the fact that people are continuing to do things in the in the old way there a, a, a digital transformation has simply not taken place and and so um, uh, that 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 project is unlikely to achieve its, um, its its planned return on investment because you know you should be saving money by using onedrive you should be improving collaboration by sh by working on a shared document as opposed to emailing multiple versions acumen tracks all of that so it doesn't just look at something like 365 because obviously you can get a lot of that data out of 365 already but we look outside of that at all the other applications that are in use right across the enterprise to make sure that people are using the video conferencing within teams and they are not using other video conferencing products so they should be able to retire a bunch of products if they if they achieve full adoption of something like teams and 365 so collaboration is just 
one of the examples of, of, um, of digital transformation. And again, I don't think it's ever been any more important than it is today. This information uh, around digital agility is presented in a um, in, in a, um, a kind of credit scoring style. So we have technology agility, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. We have employee agility, and that rolls up to an agility score, um, and that can be sliced and diced by location, by job function, uh, by one person to the next person. So we, we gather all the interactions that everyone has with the systems that are put in front of them all the time and we then um we then um analyze that through a bunch of kpis and those kpis can either be people-based kpis like you know are you still using skype instead of using um, teams they could be technology-based kpis like do you have multiple systems that perform the same function in an enterprise so um you know we, we we gather all that information present it through um analytics dash dashboards against a set of measurable kpis and again we, we can identify uh, at an employee level the digitally agile employees and the employees that have low digital agility uh, and, and that gives us an opportunity to identify development opportunities uh, uh, in, in uh, across people in the organization so we can measure this at a people level at a role level at a location level um uh, uh, yeah, anywhere you want um so so that was it a, a very quick run through there um and uh, i think there's time for some questions at the end but you know this is essentially what we're seeing is the beginning of a whole new marketplace around workforce analytics um, to improve the digital experience, to um, to retain key staff, to improve collaboration, bring products to market quicker. Um, and so um, that, that's it from Scalable. Thank you very much for your time. And I think I need to hand back to Derek. Yes, please. Thanks for that, Chris. That's quite cool, right. Uh, there you go, Terry. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks again, Chris. So that, that brings us um, quite nicely to how we then, um, once we have that data, we work with the customers, um, we have those insights. Uh, we might find that adoption is um, not as strong as it should be in some parts of the organisation. So kind of what we do at that stage is work with our partner and the customer, um, our partner with Global Knowledge, to devise um, some adoption programmes. Um, so at this stage, I'll pass over to Lisa to talk about how we do that side of things. Lisa should have screen control. I've got it. Yeah, I have it. Excellent. I can see your screen as well. Can you see my screen? Okay, lovely. All right. Um, yes, good morning and welcome to our short session, um, which is all about end user training, um, the solutions and the adoption of. Um, just a little bit of background about us. So our job is to work with organisations to design, develop and manage end, end user learning solutions. We work with uh, both the public and private sectors around Microsoft, Google, Apple, Cisco, and you know other bespoke products. So, in order to support the adoption effort, um, for us, it's all about the people and empowering users to understand, use, and reap the benefits of their shiny new systems simply by providing great training. So. Um, training and awareness is especially important for users now um, new to working in the cloud around 365 Teams, G Suite, Apple, etc. Whatever it is, because you know, in essence, it, it is a step change to new and different ways of working with new tools. And you know, we all use cloud technology on a daily basis in our personal lives, but in a work situation, it's different. And we all have existing ingrained processes and mindsets which need to be adapted to new ways of working. And, you know, we must remember as well that the technology is simply an enabler to support processes and communication and allow our people to shine. 
So how do you achieve happy users, happy ROI and happy stakeholders? Well, um, it's by providing people with training and support relevant to how they work and allow them to understand how they can benefit, what's in it for them. Um, happy ROI and stakeholders will naturally follow. Our approach. So our approach is a simple but effective approach with the four elements over on the right hand side, which are scalable and flexible services. And they can be implemented as an end to end learning solution or to plug gaps where needed if you didn't need all of those services. Um, the discovery section element is about providing solid foundations to work from. So developing plans with measurable outcomes. Delivery is about providing the right user training to make sure it's relevant and therefore effective. The support um, is about providing accessible and flexible um, support, which is aligned to your people's needs. And the, the drive phase is about maintaining that momentum, keeping it going, boosting user engagement and driving adoption with ongoing learning and awareness. So let's just have a, a practical look at each element in our approach. So the discovery um, is, well, you know, arguably the, the most important really because um, it provides and ensures firm foundations to build upon. So, you know, to understand and agree a clear vision of what's needed for your people, your organization to adopt the new system and obviously to plan how you're going to get there. How is it achieved? Well, um, by capturing organizing, organization vision and objectives. Um, Organisations, when we speak to organisations, they tend to be at various stages of discovery and obviously have differing approach and attitudes to discovery and what that needs to be and what adoption needs to be. So some customers are very clear uh, and have completed adoption planning, defined vision, implemented change management initiatives, communication strategy and secured leadership buy-in. So Wherever you are in that process, we're, we're able to support you with that. Um, we are able to host uh, discovery workshops to support and encourage and get buy-in from different groups, such as key stakeholders, uh, very important, project teams, champions, IT teams, marketing, sales, you know, whatever it is, in order for them to envision and agree on measurable outcomes linked to their objectives, their scenarios and their ways of working. Um, and then obviously to develop their plans as well. What we do is then take that, um, that treasured information and bake it into an end user um, education solution. So that will include um, content design and um, pilot sessions, champions program, training our trainers um, in order to ensure the solution is meaningful, consistent, high quality, measurable and aligned to company vision. And, you know, we work with the customers to get the right fit, as we all know, one size does not fit all. Um, now, this can happen now. Um, you know, historically, we've done this kind of discovery on site, but, you know, we're currently working with a large public sector organisation that they decided, even in the current climate, to push ahead with their deployment of new devices and moving to the cloud of their 5,000 staff. So, of course, in terms of logistics, this changes how the hardware is shipped, etc. But in terms of the scoping and discovery activities, this it's really not made much difference as we've done it all online, which uh, works really well. So just moving on to the next phase, um, which is delivery. And delivery is all about executing the planning carried out in the discovery phase and onboarding users. So you know, training needs to be relevant, enjoyable, truly useful, and of course, in line with your user's attitude to training. 
how do they like to be trained? Are there any barriers or challenges to training? What's the demographic within your organisation? You know, what will float their boat? You know, it needs to be a good fit. Um, on the screen is a, an example of the various modalities and formats in, in our armory, which we select for the adoption approach based upon the discovery results. So we have a, a very talented team of subject matter experts throughout the UK and worldwide that deliver live training, of course, when we're, when we're able, anywhere in the UK or worldwide, um, or virtual in any time zone, in any language, um, with scalable and customizable delivery options. So, you know, we've recently been working with a large insurance company, actually, that um, they offered their users the option between on-site training or virtual training. And um, to our amazement, a very high percentage chose the virtual option because it's flexible and people are able to drop into sessions when it's convenient for them. And they're getting really large numbers of up to 200 people turning up on each web webinar, which is which is quite amazing to me, really. Um, so just a, a quick overview of when we might use these different modalities. So, you know, the way in which we deliver training has changed both in modality and format. And this is an example of how we commonly provide core awareness training for end users new to the cloud or new to a particular tool. So um, we typically deliver 60 to 90 minute seminars rather than the traditional one day. Um, it, it, it's now fast, you know, quick bites training. Um, and again, on site when we're able or virtual. And what we do, we sprinkle in all that lovely information we gleaned from the discovery phase around things like the, you know, the organisational customisation, such as company messaging, you know, why people are being asked to use the new tool, what's the big picture, what are the benefits to them, around governance, so, you know, what are the boundaries, what's the etiquette around the new tools, the highlighting of security, um, and, uh, you know, tips and tricks and FAQs, really interesting, relevant, useful seminars. So, you know, overall, the training needs to be, it needs to be relevant to motivate um, and enthuse people. Um, as part of the discovery phase, we always encourage and, and, and strongly recommend having a champions group. So, to empower your champions, we typically provide, um, again, on-site classroom hands-on full day training. But, of course, this quite easily is, de is delivered virtually as well. Um, so, in terms of, of champions, I don't know whether you've started this journey yet, but look after this group of people, treat them well, because, you know, they're your secret weapon for supporting their peers driving that engagement and, and spreading the love with, you know, other groups of people. Um, for users needing additional TLC, we provide one-to-one -one and small group sessions customised to their needs. So, again, whatever it needs to be to empower this group of users. And those quick bites, so quick bites, really popular, easy to access, quick targeted sessions, which support continuous learning, offered on a regular basis. They could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes in duration, um, and they could be proper feature-based refreshers or scenario-based examples, as, as suggested by like Microsoft, for example, you know, get it done anywhere or collaborate on content or make meetings matter, make meetings memorable, you know, whatever it needs to be to, to, to capture people's imagination. Moving on to support, um, support is simply understanding how your end users need and prefer to be supported. That allows for effective ongoing support. So here's a range of standard options that can be scaled up or scaled down, depending upon the deployment approach and cadence. Um, but, you know, of course, we can dream up other creative ideas together uh, and we'll share what we've developed with other customers as well. 
just as a, as a flavor of that, a typical example uh, of the delivery of enthusiastic, buzzy type sessions in conjunction with a lunch and learn or a roadshow awareness event. Um, again, just to let users know what's coming, why it's coming, get them enthusiastic, motivated, and let them feel they're at the start of an exciting journey. And of course, this can be also delivered virtually. Floor walking provides support for users at the point it's actually needed. So usually on deployment day, um, and it helps to maintain business as usual, as it allows users to ask questions relevant to them, enable them to simply get on with their work without disruption. So again, this is just as easy to deliver virtually, and users are able to pop in and drop in and ask questions, particularly to their own work, or to join ad hoc sessions with, with colleagues. Um, quick reference guides are there to assist with the initial learning curve and provide a quick reference to new topics um, and setups. And what I've just popped um, onto the bottom of the slide there is um, Lou Maps. Um, so it's just an introduction to something you'll see in the next webinar in this series. And Lou Maps is um, it's a social and collaborative into intranet platform that integrate integrates with Microsoft and Google um, and it's designed to connect employees so it might be something of interest to you you know in order to support and engage people across your organization so look out for that one in the in the next session finally um, the final element is driving continuous learning in order to boost user engagement and drive adoption. And um, ongoing, ongoing learning opportunities, well, um, they support the maintaining um, of momentum by providing a range of easy to access learning, such as, you know, the quick bites I spoke about. So instructor-led quick bites, um, and it's also where your comms are important to advertise this quick, flexible 20, 30 minutes that people can simply drop into. Um, the other interesting element here is e-learning. So e-learning is a, is a good way to support continuous learning because it's a um, our e-learning. It's, it's, it's simple to access, very user friendly. Um, and really straightforward. Um, it can be used to provide users, you know, a quick reference, so to access the right training at the right time. And it also allows the creation of personalized learning journeys. So if you wanted to target specific content to specific users, you know, linked to their work processes, we can do that. And then it can be monitored um, you know, the monitoring of progress by the users themselves, the admin and also their managers. Um, it's, it, it's a really good way to provide a blended approach. So in conjunction with live virtual instructor led sessions, um, these are perfectly complementary and, you know, do um, they support a range of learning styles or support people that simply wish to repeat the training or jump ahead and learn more. Um, if you'd like to have a demo login, please let us know because we can, uh, we can arrange that for you. Um, there's also built-in quizzes, certificates, gamification, again, to support that maintaining of momentum. And it's all about making learning a habit, not just a one-off event, uh, and this is absolutely doable by following that, that simple process. So in a nutshell, that's our approach. It's a continuous process, tweaking and managing, realigning and adjusting. Um, and it's a process that can be repeated for all of those lovely new initiatives on, on your horizon. Um, just before I finish off, I'll just share, I'd like to share, if I may, how our approach looks in practice. So we've worked with various clients in very different industries in the public and private sectors. And here's just a small taste of what we've achieved together, working as a team and being flexible. Um, this was a housing association we worked with, 800 users, 
and they had um, office and remote workers. They were deploying new devices, Windows 10, Office 365 and Teams. And, you know, they were short on project expertise. So we were able to support and empower them. And if you see in my graphic, we put a good old dollop of project support in there. And um, we popped in a, um, you know, a PM, lead trainer and admin for them. And we worked with them on the discovery to develop um, a champions program. We um, worked with them around communications planning and created a custom ongoing trainer plan. We trained our trainers, um, you know, in all of their little customs and, you know, um, customizable messaging. And um, then we delivered, went to the delivery phase on site we also did virtual one-to-one -one drop in sessions the support element again was around floor walking on the day of deployment and we provided them with quick reference guides they now use our e-learning um, and we have created an ongoing virtual training schedule they're soon to be deploying a microsoft teams awareness campaign so we will just repeat that process and go round and round that, that 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 graphic as many times as we need to support them um, this organizer this was a fun one so this was a law firm that we worked with um, and they had 11,000 users in 40 different countries. They were um, implementing new devices, Windows 10 and cloud working. Um, and for this particular um, organization, because it was a professional services organization, they needed consistency, high quality, no nonsense, and business as usual is obviously critical. Um, so the discovery phase, we worked closely with their project team and created a bespoke content of 30 minute sessions. And we delivered one-to-one -one training to all 11,000 users in 40 countries. Um, we managed a dedicated UK training team. So all of the training came from the UK. And as you can imagine, we managed a complex logistics um, I was going to say nightmare challenge, I will say, um, which ensured the consistent high quality um, and um, maintained that ever so critical business as usual, which was, as I say, so important for, for this type of organisation. Um, and I do joke that this customer do owe me a hair colour because this one did make me grey or greyer. Um, finally, just to finish off, a healthcare company, 100,000 users in 50 countries. Um, they were deploying Office 365, OneNote, Skype, with a particular focus on company um, collaboration, collaboration across the company. We worked with them. Um, we worked with their change management team. Again, it was different. You know, this required a different approach. They wanted an organic approach so we worked with their change management team developed three custom training courses designed delivered and managed a worldwide virtual delivery schedule um, and we did virtual deliveries in 14 different languages uh, and we did some on-site buzz sessions in the uk and in the us um, and created custom quick reference guides and develop custom videos subtitled into 14 languages. So that really is a snapshot of the breadth of our experience, a uh, flexible approach to supporting our customers. So every customer and project is different. And, you know, personally, that's why I love my job. Um, so without any more ado, thank you for your attention. And I'll pass back over to Terry. Thanks, Elisa. Okay, so while I'm waiting for um, Lisa to pass control, which I think she's just about done, here we go. Um, just to kind of summarise um, on the topics here, XMA, our job 
is obviously to help working with the partners that we work with and working closely with our customers is to help uh, customers through that transformation so we focus on three areas the first part is the readiness evaluating the landscape helping articulate um, business and technology goals often they are completely different so we help work with um, both sides of the business so the technology side um, as well as uh, business unit leaders to try and help align those goals and objectives um, and then we kind of work with you through the actual transformation uh, we help secure that buy-in across the organization and then kind of once we've done that we will help you um, evolve the way things are happening uh, the way things are done so effectively creating a culture of innovation um, and that helps empower engage and retain your employees um, we're going to move over to the questions section but just before i do that there's a couple of if you can see in the handout section there's a couple of brochures there for you one of them is the workspace transformation brochure which kind of summarizes what we talked about today and it also covers off how we support customers um, in the physical world as well with the physical um, estate um, and we have a, a digital uh, workspace express brochure so that's if, if we all, as our, our bread and butter is um, deploying the technology and helping customers um, with that enablement. So that brochure kind of highlights, and not all, but um, the most common sort of projects that we work on. So that might be, I don't know, deploying uh, Intune, um, deploying Jamf to manage your iOS devices, integrating that with um, Azure Active Directory, et cetera, et cetera. And there's also um, the deployment um, and integration that we do around the G Suite side of things. So those brochures are there. I think there's a poll that's just appeared on the screen. Um, so if you could um, take a look at that as well, that would be appreciated. And kind of this brings us on to um, the question side. Just having a look at the questions. There's not very many that have come in, um, but I have, I have a couple. Um, there were a couple of questions that are quite common that. Um, find when working with customers so now we have our partners on the call it might be a good time to ask them to help address these so one of them is um, scalable so Simon and Chris how quickly uh, can scalable be implemented oh so, so Simon here um, give me a chance to talk um, so because we, we run sort of in the cloud inside AWS, we can get customer instances up in inside an hour generally. Um, so in the past, we've often sort of got up and running on day one for people. Um, it's secured and ready to go. Agents can be rolled out the same day. Agentless scanning can, can happen the same day as well. So we've done quite a few engagements in the past where we've done a thousand plus machines on day one. And um, gosh, I think our record for, for agent deployments is in the tens of thousands per day um, for, a, for a very large organization that, who are sort of ready to, to deploy on that scale. Um, yeah, but effectively it, it comes out of the box ready to go. So we can move very quickly. Brilliant, thanks for that, Simon. And how, how typically is, so when, when the agent's being deployed to an endpoint, what, what's, what's the, what are the approaches available to customers? So once we've got the agent out there, I think the thing that we're waiting for to act, we'll get an inventory, you know, same day or the next day, uh, effectively. But it's it's this usage information, this this granular data to let us start making decisions about the software estate is 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 where we can start nailing some some real return on investment against against what we're doing. That we tend to think that we'll see patterns after a week. We potentially start making decisions after four weeks, but really it depends on the the organization. So some people are happy to say, look, as far as Visio is concerned, if somebody hasn't used it for 30 days, just we'll reclaim it. Let, let's just put it somewhere else. Um, but then it might be that we have some specific financial software, for example, that we know gets used quarterly. So, you know, it would make more sense to track that over 100 days. So if someone hasn't used it over over the end of a quarter, then, then we know that it's um, potentially can be redeployed elsewhere. And the, the nice thing with the, the way the asset vision reporting is set up is we can um, we can set different thresholds for different applications or, or even sub applications. So it's extremely granular in that way. Brilliant. 
thanks for that, Simon. And then Lisa, I have um, so just, just with um, with the kind of situation that we're in at the moment, um, how if, if, if we're working with multiple teams, uh, trying to develop that uh, adoption plan to time with the transformation that the organisation is um, trying to implement or go through. How would that be achieved with the teams being like obviously dispersed uh, at the moment? How would we put together a training plan, get the consensus from the users, build those user stories? What would your approach be with that? Hi, Terry. Yes, um, that um, that can be done online. Um, so we are currently, as I said previously, we're currently working with a a, a customer at the moment and you know we're doing the discovery phase we're working through that discovery phase um, and you know having short sessions so a couple of sessions a week create doing some of the development then assessing the development um, and then obviously we will the, the, we will repeat that process or carry out that process which I've just demonstrated on the screen um, we will demonstrate that and you know carry it out online and carry it out virtually. Um, if anybody would like to, you know, experience that, if you think, well, I'm not quite sure whether you know how that would work, then we're very happy to, um, you know, do a demonstration or you know host a discovery workshop for any customers that would like to get a feel for for what that actually is. Brilliant, thank you for that, Lisa. Okay. Thank you, guys. So before I move on to the next slide as well, the other thing I want to say as well, everything we've talked about and our approach um, as XMA and with our customers is everything that we do is modular. Um, so we work with customers initially. We'll, we'll try and help build um, a roadmap, um, a strategy. Um, some customers might just say, no, I just want to do this bit. I want to get the insights into kind of where we're at today and on the back of that, have XMA work with you guys to deploy the technology and then I want to um, take a couple of the training elements um, for these groups of users or these groups of users and depending on how well that's working then I want to kind of move on to the next part of my strategy which is uh, kind of um, uh, deploying this um, across more 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 of the organization so I'm understanding that like, kind of where we are today we've kind of been fast tracked to do that so well, what I'm trying to say is um, everything that you see in, uh, we're able to work, uh, we're quite flexible and can work with customers on a modular approach to help build out that end-to-end -end strategy. So that kind of brings us to um, kind of the end of the webinar, really. There's going to be one more slide, I believe, after this, um, and a poll there. So if you do get a chance to fill out that poll before you uh, leave the call, that'd be appreciated. But this is just to let you know that like our store um, is still, um, XMA is still open for business. Our store uh, online has gone through um, some changes to make it easy for customers to purchase and uh, receive their products and search for products as well. Um, I said it over the last couple of webinars and it's probably worthwhile saying it again, not just to our colleagues, but all key workers out there. Um, our colleagues um, that are in the warehouse uh, getting these orders shipped as well as um, our colleagues in the config centre that are doing the white glove services on uh, customer uh, devices, servers, endpoints, etc. Uh, massive thank you to those guys as well. And I'm saying that not just on behalf of um, the solutions team um, but on behalf of customers as well because we've had some really positive feedback so uh, great work from those guys there. Um, that brings us to the close. Here's some contact details if you don't have an account manager, um, please feel free to ask any questions uh, that you have on this webinar and the forthcoming webinars. We'll be more than happy to help you. And the last poll should be appearing on the screen now. So before you leave, if you could just um, answer that, please, that would be really appreciated. But massive thank you to everyone for joining today. Thank you to Scalable and thank you to Global Knowledge. And thank you to all the customers that have joined us today and hopefully um, we'll speak to you again next week. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.